Is this is a meal? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Get a toy though. <laughs> the toy's the, toy the best Japan. part. <laughs> The toy's the best part. <laughs> the best part. Uh, yeah, but like portion size is a lot smaller. I was hungry like a lot. <laughs> oh goodness, so many questions. Uh, 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 yes. Oh, me? Yes. Okay. Um, so I remember you um, said you had um, uh, one or two times where you forgot um, Japanese words when you were interpreting. Oh yeah. <laughs> so if you were to forget them, like say, in the actual country are you just like a civilian are you just yeah. screwed or is it you no. like universe is english once universal you, once you reach a certain point so the, the question was like okay you talked about forgetting words while you were interpreting what do you do if you're in japan and you're having a conversation in japanese and you forget a word well, or just well, don't know what to say you don't know what to say what would you do in english well you would try to explain and you couldn't look it up and you try to explain it so if you're talking to someone you're like oh my gosh i was like driving down the road and, and I hit one of those, ah, what's that? you know that thing when you're driving and you're driving too fast and you hit it, it's like, gunga, gunga. Yes. What is that? And you're like, oh, like a speed bump? Yeah, speed bump. That, you just do that in Japanese. So, and, and you just sort of, <laughs> you just do that. You'll be fine. Yeah, and then your next question is, what if you can't, you know, explain that experience? Yeah. Um, then you just keep learning and you love yourself and you're like, it's fine. It's okay. It's, but end of the day, if you don't know a word, you have to work around it. There's just really no other way. Um, and you, you hope that you have a big enough vocabulary base that you can work with it. Um, sometimes you use body language. So, I mean, I've definitely, I've definitely done that before, though. That, that thing, you know, not that, not, not, not that, but that thing, not, not that. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so you, you make it work, and you'll get through it. It'll be okay. But, yeah. Oh, volunteer translating experiences? Uh, for me, it was conventions. Um, <clears throat> what else? Uh, volunteer translating. Um, it, there are, usually there are Japan America Society chapters in big cities. So there's a Japan America Society in Dallas, um, like New York, LA. There's one here too. There's one here too? Um, that's yeah. a great way. So reach out to your local Japan America Society and ask, and because they'll know. They'll probably be like, oh, why, why, can you interpret? Can, we, can, you, can you help us with this huge group of Japanese people that's coming into town to do X, Y, Z random thing? And you're like, uh, okay. That's, I've, I've actually done that before with my local Japan America Society. Uh, so that's... There was one in Columbus. There was one in Columbus. Yes. Good, good, good. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, yes. Great question. Do you have to drink? Um, um, you don't have to, but if you're not going to, I highly suggest making that known as soon as possible. Like, before you're at the bar, you know? Um, just say, like, I just say, like, I don't drink alcohol, I just take water. Like, you can say that. Yeah, you can say that. You can say that. Um, but just prepare to be ridiculed a little bit. It's fine. It's fine. Just know it's coming and be like, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and don't drink alcohol. Why? What? You know, like just, just push it back. It's fine. It's fine. Thick skin. Thick skin. I do like warm sake. Warm sake is very. It's good. It's good. Uh, yes. I guess I would say in that situation, would they were like, if you would say like, I'm not drinking because not because I don't drink, but because I'm driving. Like, would, would they were like? Oh, they'll talk. Okay. Great question. If you were to say like, oh, I can't drink because I'm driving. They'll totally understand. Okay, yeah. One thing a lot of people don't know is their um, drunk driving laws are very strict over there. They do not have like a blood alcohol limit. If they breathalyze you and you have any alcohol in your system, they take away your driver's license. So like, if you're driving, you are not drinking and no one will ridicule you for that. In fact, there are taxi services in Japan. I think this is really cool. Um, there are taxi services in Japan that will come to you with two people and you get in the taxi, and one person will jump out and drive your car home with the taxi. Yeah, we need to. Oh, I'm like, oh, that's, that's really useful. Uber, update your services. Come on, Uber, get it together. Yes. Did you have a question? Um, yes, I uh, 
Um, so I, uh, the company that I work for now is a German company, multinational. Yeah. Um, and I recently found out that there are a lot of international opportunities. A lot of people often go from country to country, which of course my first response was, let's look up the Japanese tech group, this company. Yeah, totally. Um, but you mentioned that um, there is a culture that, I mean, you know, we have to face it, it looks down on women in, in Japan. So what would your advice be based on your observations for women looking to work in Japan, even from going from like, a German company? Um, well, first of all, if you're in a foreign company, that's going to help you. Mm -hmm. you're, you're not going to have to deal with that nearly as much. Because most of the like discrimination towards women that I've seen has actually just been in the workplace, not in like society at large. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny, uh, because out during... <sighs> women are seen in, in traditional Japanese society as like running the household. And I don't mean like, oh, they do the laundry, the cooking, like, no. The man comes home and is like, here's my paycheck. <laughs> Which is weird, right? It's like this weird dynamic, like, how does, how does that happen? Okay, all right. But when, when like, the wife goes to the store and she's gonna get a washing machine, and the washing machine gets delivered, and like, this is what I think of like traditional, like, mama-san. The washing machine gets delivered and it doesn't work. Oh, ho, ho, hell no. <laughs> like, I'm imagining like, that Japanese mama-san going to the store and being like, excuse me, this is unacceptable, and blah, 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 and then I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'll see you, like, no, that's what I think of, you know, so, but that's outside of, like, the work culture, you know, um, so I think you're totally, you're not, I don't think you're even going to experience it if you're in a foreign company, depending on the company, of course, but most of the, the things that I'm thinking of are, like, very Japanese in nature, um, because what I'm thinking of is more, of, like, you see, like, the OL, um, OL stands for office lady. It's just like sort of like generic office assistant that you see a lot of women uh, in, like working as in Japan. Like, oh, what's it like? OL, OL, office lady. Um, but that—that's what I'm thinking of in terms of like discrimination or like the boss being like, hey, can you go get coffee for everyone? And and it's like a senior designer who's female. Like, what? But I've seen that happen before. And you just sit there and be like, this is this is weird. Okay. So a Japanese subsidiary of a international Right, right. Um, because a lot of these international companies, surprisingly, will use like English in the office, and senior management will be a mix of like Japanese and like uh, uh, foreigners. But usually, the Japanese people who are working at, at high-level positions in international companies usually have a strong command of English. And if they have a strong command of English, there's a very good chance that they spent some time abroad in foreign countries. And most of my Japanese friends and bosses that worked in foreign countries had a more like neutral view of the world, like a more like international view of the world. And I didn't really see that that sort of mentality from those individuals. Um, yes. Uh, in your current life now, do you still use your Japanese or translating? That's a great question. Do I still use my my translation skills? Yes. Um, not a ton. I don't. I I only. There's only one convention that I will still interpret for, like actively, because it's difficult to keep up my language skills. I can still, I can still talk. I can still translate. I just have to prepare for a couple days. Um, but most of my Japanese usage comes when I'm recording in the booth up, up for companies like Funimation. Um, if there's like a weird translation or a line isn't right, a director may be like, "Ah, oh, hold on, there's something weird with this line. Let me look up the translation." And most of the directors of Funimation know that I speak Japanese, so many times they're like, hey Brandon, do you mind listening to this? I'm like, no, 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 go ahead, play it. I'll play it. I'll be like, okay, there's, there's some context to the word he just used, it references this, whatever. Uh, but sometimes I'll pull up the translation and be like, what, what does that mean? And I'll listen to the Japanese and give them advice and, and move on. So I, I actually use it to, to help me with my uh, like anime dubbing, voice acting career. And on your Twitch streams. And on my Twitch streams. I I, have I heard you, Meat Saber, actually. I've heard you say it a few times with someone. Oh, oh yeah, like speaking in Japanese? Yeah, because I think someone in the chat has like the kanji. Oh, yeah, Ken. <laughs> Ken. <laughs> That's Ken? That's Ken. <laughs> Shadow okay. Paul, yeah. He's my moderator. He's okay. Cool. Yes. Sorry. No, you're fine. Ooh. 
Great question. Okay, if you're starting like young, if you're in middle school, good for you, one, for being like interested in a foreign country. Yes, yes, broaden your horizons. Um, I highly encourage you to look into a high school foreign exchange program. It's gonna be intense, but you are also at an amazing age. Your brain is still forming, it's making these neuron connections in your head. <laughs> Which means that you, right now, can learn a language and it's gonna stick in your head in a different way than someone who's learning at a different age. You can still reach the same level of competency, but it's gonna be a lot faster for you. Second of all, because you're young, you are going to have leeway in a way that adults can't. So I moved to Japan and I worked at a company and think of the expectation that came with that. I had to like, I, I had to, to add value to the company. I was expected to, to conform to social norms. But you're a kid, you're gonna have leeway and people are gonna help you and native Japanese people are gonna be like, no, no, you say this instead. No, no, you, you order, order your Uber this way. You, you know, and like, people are gonna wanna help you. So I highly recommend that you look for a high school foreign exchange program. Yeah, so you need that scary like a daughter <laughs> Yes, yes, it is. It, it is, totally. Because no, oh, I understand, I understand. But several of my friends, every one of my friends who did a high school exchange program had insane Japanese, like sounded native, sounded like opened so many doors. Uh, how do you trust them? Great question. I encourage you to look at the crime rates for Tokyo. Yeah. Because once you do, you're going to be like, what? Huh? I would routinely go jogging at 2.30 a.m. in downtown Tokyo where it was dark and not once did I feel unsafe. Super safe. Kids still play outside. No, I'm serious. It's just a thing. I, it's totally normal to see seven and eight-year-olds alone on the train commuting to school in the morning. It's a different, it's a different culture, it's a different society. It's like, crime rates are so low. I've never felt safer than when I lived in Japan. So, there's that, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, uh, I wanna go, uh, yes. Um, everybody knows that like, in different languages, they always have those like, untranslatable words that like, mm -hmm. don't make sense in your language. Mm -hmm. the untranslatable Japanese words. Uh, I haven't had like bad experiences per se, but I, I've had moments where I've had to interpret and I'm like, what does this mean? And I'm like, <laughs> uh, well you say it when this happens, technically it means this, which I know makes no sense. One of them is otsukare, <clears throat> otsukare sama desu. What that phrase is, is you're walking down the hall at your job and you see your coworker from like a different department, but you don't like really know them, but you gotta say something. You make eye contact and you're like, mm -hmm. in America we'd be like, oh hey, or hi, or hello, or what do you even say in English? I don't even, I don't know. But in Japanese, there's a word for that. And that's, what's got it. If, if it's someone on your same level or lower, or if they're above you, you say, what's got it, some of this. And that's just something you say. That's the situation in which you say it. It literally translates to like, you must be tired. <laughs> Weird, right? Okay, well, let me explain it. You, who is a tired one, what that means, like, culturally, the lens of culture that that, that phrase has come from, is like, I acknowledge the fatigue that must be the product of you working so hard. <laughs> Woo, Japanese. <laughs> and it's just something you say. It's like, I acknowledge your hard work. Let's call it someone nice. Let's call it. But you only say it to coworkers or like someone you're working with. Like you also say it to a band that just got done with their live set and they get off stage and they're all sweaty. You're like, let's call it someone nice. Like, well, you are tired. Hey, here's a towel. It's you know? <laughs> really complicated good work. Yeah, it's really complicated good work is, is a good way to put it. But it's just something to say to your coworkers. But that's, that's one. <laughs> yes. Um, do you stay in touch with your, um, like your family in Japan? That you yeah, we, uh, thank you, social media. Like, Instagram. I use Instagram a lot with my host family. Like, my host sister, I see her post a lot, and I'll comment on stuff. But, yeah. Yes. Did you have any trouble with the different writing systems, with kanji oh versus katakana? Gosh, yes. <laughs> Kanji's hard. Actually, I had problems with katakana, which is 
silly because it's one of the easier ones. You got like hiragana and katakana, which are two basically syllabaries, alphabetish things that are always phonetic. And then kanji for years and years and years. Kanji is hard. It's just good. It's hard. It's gonna be really difficult. Yeah. How easy or hard is it to navigate on your subway system? Ooh, depends on the train line. In Tokyo, it's pretty easy, especially if you're like in downtown Tokyo or central Tokyo, no problem because every single train line has like the, the English letters underneath it or like Roman characters, whatever. Um, but the further you get out from Tokyo, the more unknown it's going to be. Where I lived when I studied abroad, my host family, um, you would go to the station and there was a huge train map that only had kanji. Didn't even have Furigano, just kanji. And we're like, whoo! So you had to know the names of the places. I had to like memorize all the places. But if you're in Tokyo or Kyoto, you're fine. No worries. So you just have to memorize if you're going to go outside the map? Yeah, if you're going to go like way out into the country, like the sticks, ooh, yeah, you, gotta, you should know like the kanji for the place you're going at least. Google yes. Maps is your friend. Uh, Ooh, have I ever thought about being a Japanese voice actor? No. <laughs> so everything I've learned from being an English voice actor is there is so much that I can do with my voice in English. I'm a native speaker of English. I can give nuance. I can give intonation. I can give subtext, undertone. I can give all of these things that I don't have access to in Japanese. I can hear it. I can hear it and I can vaguely create that in Japanese. If I worked really hard, I believe I could do it because there are some actors that have done it, but I, that's just a lot of pressure, <laughs> you know? I, just, I think because of my experience working at a Japanese company, I was like, do I really want to like work with Japanese directors and like really, ooh, no, I'm good, I'm fine. But, but that's a good question. It'd be fun. I have done Japanese voiceover before, but only for like strict narration, where there wasn't like deep emotional feeling. So I, I'll give you narration all day. I can do, um, uh, like announcement. Uh, <laughs> Grandia 3, Shin Hatsubai. It's just like announcer, ja standard announcer Japanese for like Grandia 3, now on sale. Like, but that's, but there's no like intention behind that between like, this is fancy and you should buy it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but yeah. Okay, we are, I guess we're over. Ooh, we're over. I'm so sorry, everyone. Uh, but we are actually over time. Thank you so much for coming. Woo! I hope I was able to give you something to take back. And have a wonderful convention. And I will see you later.